Welcome to another video presentation from CKL Africa. My name is Francis Wario and I am the agronomist. Today we'll be talking about tree tomato farming. Tree tomato is also known as tamarillo, originated from South America, but has been in Kenya since the 1800s. It is a very popular fruit because it has a lot of nutritional value. It has been used as a health drink for many years. It's useful in managing diabetes, preventing cancer, supporting eyesight, in preventing anemia, weight loss, cardiovascular health. It's also helpful for those who are interested in keeping their skin looking fresh and healthy. It also boosts your immune system as well as your digestive system. There are several varieties of tree tomatoes which are grown in Kenya. Among them, gold mine, which is a bit yellow, Inca red, Rothamar, solid gold, and red oratio. Red oratia is the most popular because it's early maturing. Within eight to nine months, you can begin harvesting. It also has a large fruit, which has a good red color which is very good for the market. It's also a heavy producer. You can get your tree tomato seedling grafted from nurseries. It's best to get a grafted seedling because the grafted ones will help you to control some of the seed-borne diseases and pests, for example, nematodes. They will graft the rootstock being the bug weed tree, also known in the local dialect as Modakwa. This one is resistant to nematode attack, which is a serious problem in tree tomato. Tree tomato will typically last anywhere between five to eight years in the shamba, producing during that period, given optimum conditions, especially if you're feeding them well. To grow a good crop of tree tomatoes, you will require the following. The crop requires well-drained soils because it has a very shallow root system and it's a heavy feeder. It does not do well in clayish soils which are too compact. They must be loose. We recommend that you apply a lot of compost manure which helps to increase or to enhance the structure of the soil to make it better draining. The soils should be of pH between 5 and 7. Therefore, just slightly acidic, not too acidic uh, or neutral. So we recommend that you do a soil analysis, get the right pH, get the right soil structure, get the right mineral content, so you can know how best to manage those soils and to give your crop the best nutrition possible. Your tree tomato will require enough water. The tree tomato is not drought resistant, it does not do well during dry periods. So make sure you have enough water to irrigate your crop. Do not over irrigate because the tree will not withstand water logging conditions. Because the root system is very shallow, make sure that you water enough. You can irrigate maybe two or three times a week. Drip irrigation is recommended because it supplies just the right amount of water without giving too much. The tree tomato does better in cool conditions. Between 15 and 20 degrees centigrade is best for the tree tomato. For example, the highland areas in Nyahururu, in Narok, and other places where it's a bit cold. It does not do well in hot, dry areas because it's not drought resistant. The tree tomato is a heavy feeder, therefore it requires good fertile soils and therefore apply manure as often as possible. Apply manure that is well rotted to prevent possibility of diseases entering into the crop. When planting your tree tomato, use a spacing of 3 meters by 3 meters. Cut your hole two feet by two feet by two feet 
and ensure that the hole is square. Then you can mix your topsoil and well-rotted manure into the hole and plant your tree tomato seedling in the hole. You can apply some lime to the hole and some people will apply wood ash because that helps to prevent some of the fusarium diseases which could be in the soil. We also recommend that you drench with a mixture of rhodazim at the rate of 20 cc per 20 liter and Africelp at the rate of 60 cc per 20 liter. Drench it within the planting hole for best effect, protection against disease and also to stimulate the roots so that you can have quickly establishing plant. It's a good idea to mulch your tree tomato crop because this will help to maintain the soil moisture. It will also help to suppress weeds and also other diseases. So you can use natural organic mulches, for example, dry grass or rice husks or other types of mulch. Remember to keep your crop free from weeds because weeds will sometimes harbor diseases and also they can have pests. It's easier to control or to manage your weeds after the crop has grown to about half a meter to one meter high. You just need to go in there and occasionally pull out the weeds which may have grown. Before that, you may need to go in and cut back the weeds with a slasher or even do some physical weeding to keep the weeds low. Tree tomato should also be pruned. And the objective of pruning is to remove any of the suckers to enable the crop to grow in an upward position. You can also remove any of the shoots which could be growing from the rootstock because you don't want the rootstock mudakwa tree to dominate the tree tomato. Some people will also prune by removing the apical bud at about 0.5 to 1 meter stage of growth. And then the, the tree will grow in a lateral position with two or three branches. Later on, these can be brought upright and tied to a stump so that they will grow up and then again laterally. The tree tomato has a very shallow root system. And so you need to take extreme care on the roots. And sometimes the tree may collapse. You can help the tree by staking to support it so that it does not collapse. Some of the most important pests in tree tomatoes includes aphids and white flies. Aphids are serious because they can cause some viral diseases which are very destructive. Ensure that your crop is always free from aphids. Make sure that there are no weeds around the crop and also you can spray with Emaxi at the rate of 12.5 milliliters per 20 liter. You can also spray with Alphacin at the rate of 10 milliliters per 20 liter. Aphids and white flies also cause stunting and uh, deformed growth of the leaves. And this will also reduce your production of tree tomato. The aphids and white flies will produce a sugary substance, which will later on become moldy. And this is where you get the black sooty mold, a black coloration of the leaves. And this one also reduces the performance of the tree tomato because it reduces the tree tomato's capacity for photosynthesis. Another sign of white flies, the leaves can become yellow and even die in heavy infestation of white flies. The other serious pest is nematodes, which are found in the soil. A tree which has been infected by nematodes will quickly collapse because the nematodes will infect the shallow roots. Ensure that you plant using grafted seedlings, which are grafted with mudakwa tree, which is resistant to these nematodes. Roots which are affected by nematodes will be deformed, 
they will look weak and they will also have small pimples which will cover the whole root system. That's how you can tell if your field has nematodes. Cutworms can also affect your seedling at the early stage. So make sure you are controlling your cutworms. You can apply jackpot to the soil during planting to ensure that the cutworms around the area of the root, the stem are controlled. Some of the diseases which can affect your tree tomato include powdery mildew, especially during warm periods. We recommend that you spray rhodazim at least once every two weeks or three weeks, especially during the dry periods. Another disease is verticillium wilt or fusarium wilt. This is a disease which affects the roots but can also affect the leaves and the stems. You will see that the leaves become yellow and they can drop off and die. It will also affect your production. You will find that the crop is not producing and produces very few and small fruits. Drench your soil with rhodazim and also spray the rhodazim every two or three weeks. This will help to control your fatacillium and fusarium at the same time. Another disease that can affect your tree tomato is anthracnose and also leaf spot and blight. These are fungal diseases and we recommend that you control them by ensuring that your field is free from weeds and other types of vegetation. Also, you can spray stage at two-week intervals whenever you have an attack you will find that the leaves become spotty and also discolored and they have what we call necrotic spots and the leaf will eventually drop and fall off. This is quite common. It could be either of the three diseases. One of the most serious diseases in tree tomato is mosaic virus disease. And this disease is brought by aphids. So in order to manage this disease, ensure that you have crop is free from aphids. You will see the leaf will be yellow and green and mottled. In other words, looking like somebody has painted the leaf. Also, you will see deformed leaves and stunted growth. And the crop just refuses to grow even if you add manure and spray everything. These are signs of viral diseases. Viral diseases attack especially young seedlings. So keep those seedlings well away from aphids. Tree tomato, being a heavy feeder, it requires good application of manure. Apply manure at least after every rains. Also ensure that you are top dressing with an NPK fertilizer. And during times of heavy harvest, ensure you are applying NPK and also we recommend that you apply Harmony at the rate of 35 to 40 milliliters per 20 liter. This will help to keep the plant continuously producing and also to manage the harvest shock so that your plant will remain healthy and continue producing as much as possible. A well-managed crop of tree tomato will give you very high yields, as much as 400-500 kilograms per week from about one acre. The price can range from 60 shillings to about 150 shillings per kilogram on the farm. We hope you have gained some helpful tips about tree tomato farming. Send us your pictures and questions and inquiries about tree tomato farming We'd be delighted to walk the journey with you towards success in your tree tomato farming business. Happy farming and all the best. Thanks for watching our videos. We hope you enjoyed them. Please like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more such informative videos.